Hey guys, it's John Hennessy, and I'm uh, super excited to uh, talk to you today and give you a few updates on our uh, Venom F5. But before I get into what's going on with uh, F5 and uh, some of the speed records that we've been working on uh, achieving with this special car, I, I wanted to do a quick little trip down memory lane and talk about you see the image behind me of our Venom GT with the American flag uh, so proudly held out the window by our driver, Brian Smith. So that image that you see behind me is from uh, February of 2014. So this week is actually the 10 year anniversary of when our Venom GT beat the Bugatti Veyron Super Sport by running, our car ran a little over 270 miles per hour. We did that on the 3.2 mile long uh, runway at NASA at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida where they used to land the space shuttle. And uh, that was uh, a big deal for me personally, for our family, for our company 10 years ago, and it's still a big deal today. And uh, anyway, so this is kind of a, a, a time we'd like to commemorate that, talk about that a little bit, and I'll give you just a little bit of background on that program. So back in the uh, 2007, 2008 timeframe when the idea of the Venom GT came about, you know, we're always looking to like, okay, who's the fastest, who's the best, who's the benchmark, who are we, who are we trying to beat? And at that time it was Bugatti. And so again, Veyron Super Sport, I think around 2010, had run a two-way average of 267 miles an hour, something in that range. Maybe in one direction they ran 268 or 269. So we thought, okay, that's the number to beat. So we built a handful of Venom GTs at that point in time. I think maybe we'd built six, seven, eight cars. We had a development car that we're using for testing. Uh, the same car we took out and with the uh, people from Guinness, we set a Guinness World Record for zero to 300 kilometers uh, acceleration. And then we got that record, I believe that was in 2013. But it was still always the big, hairy, audacious goal, the BHAG of how do we beat Bugatti? How do we claim the title of world's fastest production series car. And so uh, had done some previous testing with Venom GT at that point in time, did a test at NASA about a month before when we set the record, uh, had an issue with weather, ran out of time, decided to go back and test the car again. Uh, uh, and we we're very fortunate the car ran 270 uh, and we had every intention of running in both directions. But the first day we got, there was bad weather, so on our second day, or only, or the, the, the only other day that we could test at that point in time, um, they said, NASA folks said, hey, look, you can, you can test, you can run, I think we were running from north to south. Uh, they said, you can run that direction all you want, but they said, on the north side of the runway, so kind of the side that we were starting from, they were testing uh, an autonomous spacecraft called Morpheus. I believe Morpheus was used to fly to Mars and the, 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 air, or the, the spacecraft could land and it had, back then it had its own form of AI where it could distinguish rocks. So they had Morpheus down there. I think we could show a picture uh, and they had all these rocks. So they said, you can run north to south all you want, but you cannot run south to north because we've got rocks and a spacecraft and a bunch of people working down there. So anyway, we, we set the record. We went 270.4 miles per hour very excited and we're like okay well look we need to make this official we need to turn around and run the opposite direction and uh we realized that we could and we're like okay well that's not that big a deal we still beat the bugatti even though we did it one way well so we published the news the video got lots and lots of views i think it's upwards of maybe 18 million views today um but then we started hearing the the haters saying well you know you but you didn't run both directions and i'm like well we could have run both directions but on that particular day, we, we couldn't. And I just thought, okay, well, well, we'll just sit back and wait for somebody to beat our 270 number, and we'll come back, we'll pull the Venom GT out of retirement, and we'll go back and get the record. And so we waited several years. We actually, uh, uh, several years later, I was in Geneva at the, at the Geneva Motor Show, and I saw the then president of Bugatti, uh, Wolfgang Durheimer, who's now, bec we've become friends, he's retired now, but Wolfgang was, he was busy, he was running around talking to media and unveiling, I think they were unveiling Chiron, so this might have been 2015 or maybe it was 2016. Anyway, so we just chit-chatted, said hi, he walks away and he turns around and kind of looks over his shoulder back at me and he kind of winks, he says, hey John, 
make sure next time you run your car, you run both directions. And I thought, okay, that's a, that's a fun little dig. Uh, that's, a, that's a true friend who's, uh, who's, you know, we've got the competitive juices and he's giving me a little bit of a dig, but I haven't forgot that. So Wolfgang, if you're watching, uh, we'll talk about, we'll talk about two-way uh, two direction here in just a moment. But anyway, just wanted to just kind of call attention to our 10 year anniversary of the, of the Venom GT beating Bugatti. We only went one direction at that particular time. So fast forward to, um, we start building the, we start, you know, we, we came out with F5, the design at the end of 2017. We finished the first production series car during COVID at the end of 20, at which point we began producing cars for other clients. We started testing the F5 on the runway down at NASA two years ago. We were up into the 270 mile an hour range, but that time my team that was working on F5 was much smaller and we had to make the decision. We had a bunch of orders and I had to make the decision, do we want to chase records or do we want to build cars and make customers happy and make the company profitable? And I chose the latter and I think that was the right choice. We had a number of clients that had waited uh, uh, in some cases, several years for their cars. And I told the team, I said, look guys, we're not giving up on, on speed records with F5. That's, that's exactly why we built the car, but we have customers that are actually, they're expecting to the, the take delivery of their car. So we, we made the decision at that point in time that we'd run the car into the 200, I think we went 272 miles an hour on, you know, not even full power. I mean, way less than full power. But anyway, that was just kind of a testing exercise to make sure the car was good to go for how our customers would drive the car. So we spent the last two years building, producing cars for clients. I think in 22, we, we finished uh, 10 or 11 cars. Uh, in 23, about the same number. We just finished, uh, I think the 22nd or the 23rd car behind me that we'll be delivering in the next few days. Anyway, so uh, again, highly focused on building and delivering great cars for our clients. Uh, you know, really an unmatched power to weight ratio, 1,817 horsepower a little under 3,000 pounds of curb weight, and really a driving experience that I've, I've not experienced in another uh, road car. I've been in a few race cars that are maybe in the, in the realm of a little bit slower than F5, but still it's the fastest car I've ever driven. So where, where, does, that, where does that bring us to today? Well, again, back to this little bit of a rivalry with uh, our friends from uh, France and Germany, the, the Bugatti team, uh, as well as uh, Christian and his guys in, in uh, at Koenigsegg in Sweden. So in 2017, uh, Koenigsegg took their Agar RS out to Nevada and they ran a two-way average of right at 278 miles an hour. One way they went 285. So at that point in time, they, they had, had beaten the, the, the Venom GT at 270, held that record for four years. And by the time that that number was beaten, we're like, okay, well, we have customer cars. I don't really want to go borrow a customer car to try to beat that number. but you know, we're coming out with the F5 and I'm like, okay, we can wait for the F5 to, to take back the title. So again, uh, fast forward from there, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, Bugatti is, I mean, uh, Koenigsegg had done this amazing thing with their Agera. Uh, and I'm thinking the Bugatti guys aren't just gonna sit by the sidelines and do nothing. They'll sandbag and so whether it's Winkleman, who's another friend or Durheimer, they're like, you know, we, we're just like, we just want a comfortable car. You can take your wife to the opera in that's fast and, and I'm thinking, you guys are a bunch of sandbagging euros. And so they, you know, they talk quietly, but they do, they do want to compete. And so out of nowhere, and I think it was September of 2019, the news comes out about the uh, Chiron uh, Super Sport, or the three, I guess they call it the Chiron Super Sport 300 plus. Uh, you know, there's some debate on whether it was a production series car because it was lighter and had a roll cage and maybe some aero modifications that aren't necessarily uh, on their road cars, but I'm not gonna, look, I'm not gonna dink the Bugatti guys because the car ran 304.77 miles per hour. So the first production series car, maybe with some modifications that had run over 300 miles an hour, is a huge accomplishment. Uh, I got a chance to see the car at Goodwood at the Festival of Speed a couple summers ago and talk to Andy Wallace, the guy that drove it, and it's still, to this day is, is a monumental number. Nobody's come even remotely close to running those type of speeds, but 
the big, uh, the door that they left open for us and Koenigsegg and maybe others is for whatever reason, the Bugatti guys did not run two directions. They came out with their press release and they're like, well, from a safety perspective, the way the track at Air Lassain is designed, if we run the opposite direction, it's not as safe. Okay, I, I take them at their word at that, but they'd run both directions with the, with the Veyron Supersport in 2010, so I'm not sure what's changed from a safety standpoint, whether they're running 269 or 304, and those are still really fast speeds, but they only ran in one direction. So it still leaves the door open, whether it's for F5, Kona Seg, or maybe somebody else, maybe Remots uh, wants to join in on this since they run Bugatti and their electric car company, of what's going to be the first car to run over 300 miles per hour production series road car. We've delivered 22 cars to clients. Clearly Bugatti's built hundreds of Chirons and Kona Seg has got their Yesco that they're now producing and they'll deliver, you know, probably a hundred plus cars in the next few years. So, so those are true production series cars. These are not one-offs. Uh, what's going to be the, the first production series road car that has the two-way average of over 300 miles per hour? That's exactly what we've been working towards. This is the year that we're going to find out. Anytime we post a picture, a video, Instagram, YouTube, on our website, newsletter, whatever, always see the comments. When are you going to go run the car? What are you waiting on? Well, we now have the car, it's just off camera. Uh, it's just about ready to go. We have the driver, we have the team. Uh, we believe we have the car that is capable of running a number well north of 300. We're not trying to run its theoretical top speed, which the aerodynamics to say is 328 miles per hour. 328 miles per hour, we're not trying to run 328, but we would like to go run the car with an average speed, the first car over 300 miles per hour, two-way average, so Maybe that's 310 in one direction and 300 in the other direction and it averages out to 305 or something like that. We'll see. Um, so we have the car, we have the driver, we have the, the expertise uh, to do it. Now the big question is, where do we run the car? We don't have airless scene. We don't have our own you know, six mile long straightaway uh, on our own private uh, proving grounds. We do have our own proving grounds here, but I've got maybe just a hair over a quarter mile and. I think this car runs in the high 170s in, 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 in about a quarter mile or a little bit longer. So anyway, where are we going to do this? I, I think at this point in time, again, the runways aren't long enough, whether it's NASA, whether it's other runways uh, in the U.S. There's just not enough space there to tr reach the true VMAX of, of our car. So I think we're looking at a, at a public highway. I think we're looking at a highway here in Texas. We've done that on two other occasions, the state, the, the state of Texas Department of Transportation has been very kind to us and allowed us to test on some new toll roads. I, I drove a C7 Corvette again about 10, 11 years ago and did a little over 200 miles per hour on the Grand Parkway on the west side of Houston. And then a year before that, we ran uh, a Cadillac and a Camaro on State Highway 130, so up near Austin, near the just south of the Circuit of the Americas racetrack. Uh, the CTSV ran 221. The Camaro, I think, ran 204 miles per hour. So we do have some precedent. We do have a, a good working relationship with, with TxDOT in the state. So if I could wave my magic wand, we would run our F5, who knows, maybe even out here on I-10. We've got a nice stretch of I-10 right out here in front of our factory. But again, the logistics of that, we're just now delving into the possibility of those type of uh, options for running the car. But you know, ideally we would have four, five, six miles to really fully stretch its legs. So. This is the year that we're trying to do it. I'm not making any promises, I'm not making any proclamations, but I am absolutely committing that we will do our absolute best to safely uh, and properly run the car to be the first road car with an average speed of over 300 miles per hour. Maybe we get there first, maybe Christian and the Kona State guys get there first, maybe Bugatti comes out of retirement and says, you know what, we weren't quite done yet. I really believe when Bugatti ran their car I guess it was the summer of 19, uh, and then they published the news in September of 19. At three or 4.77 miles per hour, they're really, they were trying to get to 500 kilometers. And for whatever reason, maybe Andy said, hey, look, today that's enough. I've, I've, risked, my, I've ris risked my life uh, for a few runs down the, the, the straightaway there. But I still think that that's something, uh, I think if the engine, if we could, if we could uh, be a, a fly on the wall of the uh, design and engineering studio at Bugatti, there are probably still some team members and engineers that are like, 
you know, I think if we tweak this and tweak that, we could get to 500K. 500K is a ginormous number at 310.8 miles per hour. So, so we'll see what happens. But uh, we saw some news last week about Yesco Absolute coming out and Christian talking about they're prepared to run for the number. Our hat's been in the ring. I'm here to remind everybody that, that we're very intent on competing with that and let's see what happens. May the uh, fastest car win. See you at 300 miles an hour first, whoever gets there. Thanks.